Last week, after 11 years as a pro player, Bjergsen retired. We've kind of been here before because it kind of happened before, but this time it seems like it's forever. In a candid message to his fans, the contender for the GOAT of North American League of Legends explained why he plans on leaving the game and esports for good. All right, before we get into the video, I wanna let you know we've partnered with Qualcomm Technologies and the team over at Snapdragon Elite Gaming to explore the world of mobile esports. Our latest Worth episode explores the story of Bobby and OG, two of the best Brawl Stars players in the world. But before they teamed up, they truly hated each other. They had to overcome their differences to prove that the greatest of enemies can become the perfect team. You can check out that episode using the link in the description box below. So, so, Bjergsen, where to begin? Well, we could start with my Bjergsen shirt, which I'm wearing for this video, but you can't really see it very well. But let's start at the beginning of his career. Bjergsen started his career in earnest way back in 2012 with Copenhagen Wolves. Although he was just 16 years old, his raw talent was obvious already. By the following year, he'd been picked up by TSM to become their star mid laner. Everyone suspected he would do well, but even Bjergsen would have blushed if you told him what was to come. TSM set about dominating the next four years of the NA LCS, winning or coming second in every split and Bjergsen was always at the center of it all. No mana and no range on the fight. There's a Blade of the Rune King though. They're able to take down Lustboy. Bjergsen comes in. There's oh the shuffle. God. There's the triple. Could that be the quadra? And Bjergsen picks up a beautiful play. But despite the weight of his fans, team, and region on his shoulder, Bjergsen always kept a level head and stayed humble, even when the GOAT called him OP. He's OP. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's OP. You, you. I'm OP? Yes. Secret OP? Okay. Yeah, maybe this year, 2020. Yeah. The TSM Golden Age didn't last forever though, and after 2017, the championships dried up. Save for their summer 2020 title, where Bjergsen had enemies permabanning his zillion. But even that glimmer of hope was tainted by a biblically bad Worlds performance, where TSM failed to pick up a single win across the entire tournament. And at this point, people were speculating about whether he would leave TSM in his chase for international glory, but then he made a very surprising announcement. I'm here to talk about the fact that I'm retired as a professional player and stepping into the head coach role for TSM. In some ways, this move to a coaching role made total sense. Bjergsen was an experienced, natural leader who already had the trust of his team. With Bjergsen as their coach, TSM performed well in the regular season but just seemed to crumble in playoffs. Bjergsen then unretired from playing to join TSM's longtime rivals, Team Liquid. Fans were about to see Bjergsen play without TSM for the first time in nine years. But despite some decent regular season form, Team Liquid couldn't win when it really mattered, resulting in the team failing to qualify for Worlds for the first time in five years. And then, at the end of last season, Bjergsen moved to 100 Thieves, joined by an unretired double lift. The veterans finished third in the regular season, but were dispatched in the first round of playoffs. It just sucks that we couldn't pull through. I think we... Uh, we had a lot of problems and we kind of band-aided those problems by playing a very one-dimensional and predictable playstyle and draft. And that's going to get harder and harder towards playoffs when we have so many locked bands. We have very obvious pick order and champions and kind of a play style of draft that we're willing to play. And um, I think to win a championship, you don't have to be able to play everything, but you need to be less predictable than, than we were. In that recent interview with Travis Gafford, Bjergsen sounded reflective, but not dejected. That's why it came as such a shock when last Friday he made this announcement. I want to make this video personally because I want to talk to you guys about the fact that I am stepping away from League of Legends and esports in general and, and why. Bjergsen made it clear that this decision was nothing to do with his teammates or recent results. It was something that had been coming for a long time. After an astounding 11 years as a pro player, Bjergsen's experienced something that a lot of us can relate to. He's changed. I've been playing League of Legends for probably like half my life at this point. It just doesn't feel as fulfilling as it did when I was younger, just spending all my time playing League, studying League, and just chasing winning above everything else. The way I see it is either you really enjoy the day-to-day -day of practicing, preparing, and, and competing every single week, or you are really like 
sacrificing your love for the game and enjoyment of competition for the long term of trying to work your ass off to win a championship or win an international tournament. And I think just neither of those really are resonating with me anymore. He then touched on something that we all know about him. He's an absolute workhorse. Bjergsen always had raw mechanical skill and an ungodly ability to control his lane, but what really set him apart from the competition was his absolute devotion to keeping up with the evolving game. League can be a brutal game in this sense. Its core objective to destroy the enemy Nexus has always remained the same, but almost everything else has completely changed beyond recognition over the years. It's difficult for the average player to keep up with, and that's only amplified at the pro level, where long Longevity is often correlated with how much of themselves they're willing to give up. I worked harder than a lot of people and I wanted it more than a lot of those people. And I was willing to sacrifice, you know, time with friends, family, personal interests, hobbies, personal curiosities, really just anything. For a long time, I've kind of felt and, and even told the people around me that if I didn't feel like I could give my absolute all towards winning and towards being the best and felt like I could be one of the best players in the world, um, that then it would be time to stop. And um, it feels like that time is now. What more can you say? That is a winner's mentality. You don't start something unless you have the desire to win and you finish if that ever goes away. So is this really goodbye? Well, there's definitely a little bit of deja vu with all of this. I thought Bjergsen was gone for good when he retired back in 2020. Even when he moved to a coaching role, it seemed like his playing days were behind him. But then we had two more years of them. Well, Bjergsen explained that he didn't really see that first retirement as a retirement at all. He feels that that was simply a role shift, but that this is him truly stepping away from League of Legends. One thing I found really interesting in the video was Bjergsen talking about how League helped his mental health at a young age. It's something he's touched on in the past, but hearing him say it now, at the end of his journey, feels all the more poignant. Competing in League of Legends and esports has really changed my life in every way imaginable. I started playing professionally when I was 16 years old, and it really brought me out of a really dark place. Initially, League was just an escape for me, an escape from school and being bullied and all my struggles in life, and I never really felt competent at anything. Even when I was playing professional in my earlier years, I felt like League is the only thing that I am competent at or even know how to do. So what is next for the Bjerga King? Being the face of North American League of Legends definitely looks good on a resume, but how do you follow that up? In a video, Bjergsen said he's gonna go away and figure that one out while spending time with his friends and family. And that makes sense. Since he was 16 years old, Bjergsen's known who he is, what he wants, and where he's going. While a lot of people are always planning their next goal, Bjergsen, like athletes and pro players, all over the world has only ever had one goal in mind, winning. And when you're done with that, it can take some time to figure out a new goal that means as much. It goes without saying that there will be a Bjergsen-shaped hole in the LCS for the foreseeable future. Calling someone the face of something can be a bit of an overused phrase, but not in this case. Bjergsen has been a rock in North American League for over a decade. Players and teams have come and gone in that time. But no matter how much things changed, you always knew Bjergsen would be there. He's been a continuous thread that links the modern LCS back to its very roots. And I think that his video sort of is like a reality that like we're all getting older. We all grew up with each other in, in many ways. And I don't mean like me and him or, you know, mean anyone. I mean like League of Legends grew up with each other. Normally I don't, I don't, I feel like I don't give two shits when I read retirement posts or that someone's taking a break, but this one, this one really does bother me. On the Rift, he'll be remembered in highlight reels forever for his Syndra, Zed, Azir, and of course, Zillion. I personally think they should just retire that champion along with him like a jersey number. In the record books, he retires with the record number of total kills in the LCS and the second most LCS titles with six right after double lift with eight. And as a person, he'll be remembered for being a humble, incredibly hardworking and decent guy who grew from a quiet rookie to an inspirational mentor to those around him. Perhaps even Bjergsen himself doesn't know where the next chapter of his life will Will lead him, but if it's even half as incredible as the first, he'll be just fine. I was a huge Bjergstam, not ashamed to admit it, still am. 
Still am. I always felt like he was just untiltable. League is one of the most tilting games ever. And yet this guy playing under all that pressure just didn't tilt. No matter how bad things were going, you always felt like Bergson could pull it out of the bag. And he often did. Sad to see him go. The NA GOAT.